Well, good evening, family, all your friends of Northgate. We're so glad you're with us tonight. Uh, thanks for thanks for joining in. Just to let you know, uh, uh, Ruth and I went to uh, celebrate Evelyn Van Horn's 91st birthday today. She is 91 today, and she looks as good as ever. So I was very pe pleasantly surprised, and uh, she had some of the friends of the uh, the uh, place that she stays at. The uh, yeah, the place that she stays at. And so there were a lot of friends that were there. And it was good. And it was just good to see her doing so well. Just thought I'd let you in on that. Uh, so last week, uh, we talked about God's anger at sin. And before I go into chapter 2 tonight of Romans, uh, we need to pick up uh, the last four verses of chapter 1. Be, uh, because although the Bible is separated in chapters and verses... It's actually better studied or read thought to thought. So this is a continuous thought at the end of chapter one of Romans going into chapter two. So let me let me read those last four verses of chapter one, and um, and then we'll go right into we'll go right into uh, chapter two. Since they since they thought it foolish. Now this is this is Paul speaking to the Romans. His letter to the Romans. And uh, he's talking about the wickedness and the sin of the people. Uh, Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness. Listen to this. Sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, uh, malicious behavior, and gossip. Uh, they were backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, boastful. Uh, they invent new ways of sinning, he says, and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand and they break their promises. They're heartless and they're, they're heartless and they have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that they do uh, uh, they, that he requires that those who do these kinds of things, deserve to die. Yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. Now going right into chapter 2, we're going to be talking about Paul's answers to those who judge these people who are sinning. And, and they judge other people here. So let's read verses 1 through 4 here of chapter 2. So here, hear me now. He, he's talking about their sinful ways and uh, now he says, now you may think, in verse, in verse uh, 1 of chapter 2, you may think you can condemn such people, but you're just as bad. And you have no excuse. When you say they are wicked and should be punished, you are condemning yourself. For, for you who judge others, uh, you do these same things. And we know that God, in, in his justice, will punish Anyone who does such things, that whole list that we read. Uh, since you judge others for doing these things, why do you think you can avoid God's judgment when you do the same things? Don't you see how wonderful? Now, now Paul makes a little, he, he softens it up here. He makes a little bit of a turn here, a little pivot here. Uh, he says, don't you see how wonderful and kind and patient uh, God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? The kindness of God. See, the Bible says that it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. Okay, and we're going to talk about in just a moment. So here in verse 1, Paul speaks as if he is writing to one particular man. But he doesn't say who that man is. Uh, it might be someone who has a prideful spirit, uh, proud that he's not wicked like everybody else. Uh, he doesn't like the evil. Uh, he, he, he's not like the evil pagans that Paul had described here. Or he might even be a Gentile. So we don't know who Paul's speaking to. Or is he just speaking to the Jewish and Gentile people as, as a whole? In verses 9 and 11, we'll get there in a moment, but Paul shows that he's speaking especially to Jews. Many Jews wanted to teach in the first Christian church. 
Unlike the Gentile, these Jews knew God's law. And uh, they were happy to accuse other people. But Paul said that they would be accusing themselves also. Uh, remember, the Jews, the Jews knew that they were a special people, but not to the place where they could lord it over others, other people. In verses 2 and 3, Paul here is telling them that God's judgment is the judgment of God that is true. He knows all the facts, doesn't he? God knows all the facts, but man is so quick to begin to judge other people. And so he doesn't want to, uh, man doesn't want to think about his own sin, which even may be worse. And this is what Paul is trying to communicate here. You remember when Jesus spoke about a man who had a piece of wood in his eye? You remember that parable? This same man wanted to remove a tiny piece of lint or dust from someone else's eye. He, 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 had a, he had a log or a piece of wood in his own eye, but yet he wanted to remove a speck of dust from someone else's eye. See, the truth is a person who quickly blames other people, they cannot avoid the judgment of God. Sometimes it's true that there's more going on besides what's going on. What I mean by that is we're sort of quick to judge people, but we don't know all the circumstances. Only God knows all the circumstances. And, uh, you know, we, we see someone speeding on the freeway and they cut us off or whatever, and they're, they seem to be in a big hurry or whatever. We immediately want to call them stupid or an idiot or something like that, but we don't know the circumstances behind it. Uh, and, th and that, that and that's true for a lot of things in life. You know, everybody's got a story, don't they? Uh, they? They've got issues that they're dealing with. And it's real easy for us to judge other people. And uh, Paul's saying here we can't do that. In verse 4, the proud person, he chooses to forget about God's judgment. He thinks that, that God's kindness and his patience really have no value. Because... It's, it tells us there that God's kindness is what leads us to repentance. The truth is, God waits patiently for us. He knows what we're like. He knows that we're full of sin. And he waits for people to repent. So important that we understand that. If, if, if you're sitting here listening tonight and uh, uh, you know, you've got some issues of sin issues in your own life, just know that God loves you and he's just waiting for you to say, I'm sorry, I repent. I make a 180. I, 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 this is not going to happen with me anymore. And God will honor that. See, we don't understand always uh, why God waits to, to punish people. But uh, we have to know this, that his timing is always, always perfect. Amen. Suddenly, the time will come when God will judge everyone. In 2 Peter um, 3, 2 Peter 3, let's see, verses, verses 8 and 9. 2 Peter 3, 8 and 9. Where am I at? Oh, here I am. <clears throat> but you must not forget this one thing, dear, brother, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. Uh, the Lord isn't really slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he's, he's being very patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but he wants everyone to what? Repent. So uh, we may say, well, you know, why do, why do people do bad things and it seems like they get away with it? God is patient with his, with his judgment. He really is. But he will judge someday one day, uh, he, God will judge everyone. And uh, right now, he's being patient, and he wants people. He wants, his, he wants his creation to look to him and ask for forgiveness and, and tell them tell him that they're sorry. Secondly, we want to talk about God's judgment that is fair. God's judgment is fair. Let's read verses 5 through 11. But because you are stubborn... Paul says, and you, and you refuse to turn from your sin, you are storing up trouble of punishment for yourself. For a, day, for a day of anger is coming when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. Make no mistake about it. God is going to judge. 
He's going to judge everyone. He will judge everyone according to what they have done. He will give uh, eternal life to those who keep on doing good, speaking after the glory and the honor and the and Im, Im, immorality that God offers. Uh, he will he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves, who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness. There will be trouble and calamity for everyone who keeps on doing what is evil. Remember that. For the Jew first and then for the Gentile. Hmm. But there will be glory and honor and peace from God. Listen to this. This is the good part. There will be glory and honor and peace from God for all who do good. For the Jew first and then for the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. Um, in verse 5, Paul basically says, What's that? Well, the problem is you refuse to change. You refuse to change. You're not sorry for your sins. You haven't repented. And what you're doing is you're storing up the wrath of God against you. Uh, Sometimes we, we just bring things on ourselves, don't we? But this is not talking about that. This is talking about the wrath of God. And they will suffer for those who continue to sin uh, because of God's anger. But know this, God's judgment is fair. In other words, we, if, if, if people bring things on themselves and God's going to judge them, we can't stop and say, well, God is mean. You know, God is not fair or life isn't fair or, or whatever. No, you're right. Life isn't fair, but God is always fair. And his judgment, it says here, his judgment is fair. We will get what we have coming to us. Verse six, both the Old Testament and the New Testament record God's judgment in, in, the, in human affairs of people. Uh, but here, Paul is not saying that a person can earn eternal life if he just does good works. That's not what he's saying here. So don't get mixed up with that. Only faith in Jesus will save somebody. Uh, but after a person has trusted Jesus, that person is going to want to please Jesus. That means you'll want to do what's right. Because, because of the faith that God has given us, given you and I, um, we, we're, we're going to want to do what is right. In uh, uh, James chapter 2, verse 17, it says this, Faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. It's dead and it's useless. Uh, Paul speaks about people who continue to practice their faith, though. He shows the difference between them and selfish people. He also tells us what will happen to them. The good people, the believers, will inherit eternal life. Isn't that great? The good people, the, the, those, who, who, those who are believing in, in, the, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, believers, uh, they, and they've repented of their sin, they're the ones that, that seem to have an ongoing relationship with Jesus. That's, that's what... That's what we need to have. That's what we need to strive for, an ongoing relationship with Jesus. But those who continue to do wicked things, they're going to suffer God's judgment. Jesus told a story about this in Matthew uh, chapter 7. Let's go there real quick. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock, though the rain comes and the torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on a bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus finished these sayings, he, saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of the religious law. So, a building without proper foundation is weak. That person, 
when you when you relate that in the spiritual sense, that person is not going to be able to avoid God's judgment. Don't get mad at me if that's what it says here. Uh, but that's the truth. Verse 11 says that God does not prefer any one nation or a person over over another. He judges he judges everyone exactly the same way. Thirdly, we want to talk about uh, God's God that God will judge everyone, both Jews and Gentiles. Verses twelve uh, through sixteen. Let's finish it up here. When the Gentiles sin, they will be destroyed, even though they never had God's written law. And the Jews who have, who do have God's law, will be judged by what the by by that law, when they fail to obey it. For merely listening to the law doesn't make us right with God. It's obeying the law that makes us right in his sight. Even Gentiles who do not have God's written law, they show that they know his law when they instinctively obey it. It's without, it's, it's, even without having heard it, they instinctively believe it, he said. They demonstrate that God's law is written in their hearts <coughs> uh, for their own conscience and their own thoughts uh, either accuse them or tell them that they are doing right. This is the message I proclaim. The day is coming when God, through Jesus Christ, will judge everyone's secret life. The Jews had a written law. They had the, the law of Moses. They knew about God's standards and the Jews had every opportunity to hear the to, to hear it, uh, hear the law of God. Uh, they they went every Sabbath uh, to in the synagogue and they heard the word of God. So what Paul is saying here is that the law was the law itself is not good enough. There was a time when the law was good enough and and but but not anymore. But they still need to obey the law. The Gentiles, on the other hand, they did not have the law. But God will still be their judge. One, no one can avoid God's judgment. In verses 14 and 15, Paul explains more about the knowledge that the Gentiles had. He, said, he says it twice, that the Gentiles do know something about God's standards. Why? Because they have a conscience. And who put that conscience within them? God did. He did, it, he did it with every human being. The simple fact that the conscience exists shows the truth about God's law. And it's because of conscience people are aware that there's a difference between right behavior and wrong behavior. So in verse 16, it says, On the day of judgment, God is going to judge everyone's life, and his judgment will be fair. Because he knows the very secrets that are in our heart. In verse in uh, Psalms one thirty nine, it says this: "Lord, you have searched me, and you have known my thoughts, and you know my thoughts, and you are familiar with my ways." The God who created you knows you better than you know yourself. He created you. The, the hairs of your head are numbered. He, 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 he formed you uh, uh, from your mother's womb, and God knows us, and, and he has the ability to search us. The Holy Spirit has a, has a way of coming down deep into our, deep into our lives and, and shows us where we're wrong, where we, where we have sinned, and that's when the, when the Holy Spirit does that, we need to repent of our sins and ask, ask the Lord Jesus to forgive us. God is going to judge by Jesus. Jesus himself said that the Father has given him all authority to judge. And we find that in John chapter, chapter 5, verse 27. It's actually good that Jesus is the judge because he knows, um, he knew what it was to be a man. And uh, also, he's going to punish those um, or I should say, he will not punish those who trust him. And now we're talking about the believer, you and, my, you and me. Um, he's rescued us from sin 
by the means of his death on the cross. And uh, we, are no longer, we are no longer bound for eternity separated from God, but we are bound for heaven. We are bound f- for a relationship with Jesus uh, for, the, for, for all eternity. And so uh, the punishment will be for those who continue to disobey and, and not, not receive him as Savior and Lord of their life. I know there's people out there that will tell you, oh, there's a lot of ways to get to heaven, but that's not what the Bible tells us. The Bible says that those who continue to sin, and we read, we read the list of all of those things, uh, that, that there's going to be judgment for them. Uh, we, on the other hand, um, are people who trust him and love him, have received him as Lord and Savior, and he's rescued us from our sins. Somebody say amen, because that's so true. By means of his death on the cross, amen? So we'll, we'll pick it up at verse 17, uh, probably finish the whole chapter two next week. But uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. God bless you. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye.